as a conservative, you'll never hear me say something like, um, oh, I just don't understand what's going on. I just don't get it. I just don't understand what, what is happening. This is a very common sort of reaction from conservatives as they confront the, uh, the inanities and the outrages perpetrated by leftists in our culture and progressivists with the, you know, mad ideas and schemes and statements and uh, hypocrisies and all the rest of it. I just don't get it. What's the world coming to? And it's also um, combined with thoughts about how, well, you know, feminism started out okay, but it's just really gone off the rails, you know. And environmentalists, you know, they used to have some really good ideas, but now they've just gone off the rails. And in recent times, you know, the original noble ideas and the good ideas they had have just, you know, really you know, got lost in this new wave of you know, virtue signalling and, uh, and ever-increasing domination of our culture by the left. And I think, oh, come on, guys. <laughs> this stuff started 60 years ago. It wasn't really good back then and just went off the rails. It isn't something that's gone in the wrong direction. It should never have gone anywhere in the first place. <laughs> Practically all of this stuff. And you'll never hear me use this language of something that started out pretty good and you know, just sort of um, degenerated and, I don't know, they just went off the track somehow. You'll hear me say, I understand everything. I get everything. And I do. I understand all the stuff intellectually. But there is something about it I don't get. I understand what the leftists and progressivists are up to. And I even understand the motivations for why they do it. But what I don't get is the, the their failure to check themselves at the door, as I put it. Consider this proposition. Why did you rob the bank? Oh, well, because I... Uh, well, I, you know, well, I needed the money. <laughs> now, that statement gets 10 out of 10 for logic. <laughs> or to a woman, you know, why did you abort your um, own child in the womb? Well, because having a baby at this time would be just really inconvenient. <laughs> so you see that I understand all of this on the intellectual plane, and I even understand the motivations. But what I don't understand is how a person can get to a point where they can't see that what they're doing is simply wrong. And in the case of leftist progressivist ideology, it's always been wrongly motivated right from the get-go when it all started back in the silly 60s. For example, I've laboured the point many times that uh, feminism, which starts out as, oh, women's equality, you know, the equality of women, it was never about that. If you look into what was going on back then, right at the start, it was putting down men, and it was a solid um, belief that men, that, that women uh, shouldn't just be equal to men, but let's, let's kind of uh, acknowledge that women are actually superior to men. <laughs> So, so they're replacing one um, idea of superiority with another idea of superiority. Back in the Vietnam War days, uh, leftists would always deny that they were on the communist side, but they plainly were. If they were in the university common room talking about the issue, that would be uh, the subtext of all the discussions. So, well, of course, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. You know, uh, we all know that we, we think the communists are the good guys. <laughs> but if a conservative walks into the room and, um, you know, appears in the midst of them, uh, they will quickly sort of change their tune and then put a completely different um, spin on the conversation and talk about the quest for Vietnamese and, uh, 
you know, self-determination and nationalism. It's all nationalism. Oh, yeah. Another example is a man from the 50s who uh, is complaining about McCarthyism and I was on a street corner just handing out leaflets, you know. That's all I was doing. Yeah, right. Like, if he gets, and, and people like him get into power in the 1950s in the United States, uh, they will set up another year zero and, you know, uh, a gulag and another uh, genocide American style if they have enough if they have sufficient power they will do that they're the kind of people who will do that and scratch the surface and that's you know where they're really coming from men who accommodate themselves to feminism are betraying what it means to be a man they are traitors to the human race which is made up of men and women and they are men and they're betraying the male part of the human race to the extent that they acknowledge feminist imbecility. Especially in these days of masculine toxicity or whatever toxic masculinity. I mean, like, if we've already got one nonsense term, I might as well make up one of my own. Anyway, we're the feminist war against men total war against men is shown up for what it is that's being a real traitor to men and your own personhood as a man and again it all comes back to this thing of what is it that darkly motivates them to simply not understand that what they're doing is wrong and why is there so little attention paid to the to dark forces that motivate these people? The dark corners and recesses of their minds never has any light shone upon it. And the greatest um, offenders in this are the conservative uh, commentators who should be exposing all this for what it actually is instead of pussyfooting around and tacitly accepting the substance of what these people are saying by accepting a lot of the details which they seemingly do either to um, make themselves appear a little bit more kind of um, acceptable socially acceptable or because they want to see these rabid ideologues in the best possible light, which reflects the fact that they themselves are, you know, good, decent human beings and want to see the best in others. But the result is that all this uh, politicking and ideologizing just goes round and round in circles and nobody gets anywhere until they bite the bullet. And see these types for what they are, people who just want to throw a hand grenade at Western culture and everything they despise about a society that's morally and spiritually bankrupt and that has provided them with nothing to uh, believe in and provides no overarching meaning in life. And... As for the motivations being evil, uh, I've got an anecdote from uh, back in, I think it was the 1980s, in Melbourne, uh, Australia, there was a, um, a mad leftist communist union called the Builders Labourers Federation, led by a rabid communist, and they would use their union power to advance their communistic causes. On one occasion, they were working on a building site in Melbourne, uh, right close to a Chinese restaurant, and they went on strike and couldn't keep working unless they were supplied with free meals from the Chinese restaurant. And you should have heard the reaction from all the old fogies. Oh, they've gone too far this time. Oh. <coughs> 
which takes us right back to my original proposition. Oh, you know, they basically sort of reasonable types, but they've gone too far this time. No, they haven't gone too far. They shouldn't have gone anywhere at all. They don't care about Chinese food. They don't even like Chinese food. <laughs> they just want to sabotage Western culture for their communistic causes. And that happens all the time in modern culture and has been happening, you know, for the last five or six decades and people just don't seem to get it. <laughs> well, now it's time to get it and to respond accordingly. To see this leftist guff and psycho babble for what it is and call it out and stop pussyfooting around with, oh, I just don't get it. I just don't understand it. I don't know what society's coming to. Oh, please, just stop it. That's all for now.